Quality eight. What do you mean when you say divine truth results in a fearless existence? Well, because divine truth is God's truth, obviously it exposes anything that's false in the universe. Anything that, false, that is false creates fear. So every time we believe something that's false, we actually finish up having fear surrounding that particular thing. And that applies whether the thing is material in its nature, so it's a false belief about the universe itself, or whether it's spiritual in its nature, in, in other words, a false belief about our spiritual existence, mm -hmm. or whether it's emotional in its nature, a false, truth, a false belief about our emotions. So all of these false beliefs create fear, and divine truth exposes fear. In other words, it reduces fear. In fact, once we understand all of God's truths on any subject, we have no fear at all left on that particular subject. In addition, once we get rid of fear, when we become at one with God, we've gotten rid of fear. Once we get rid of fear, we are open to accepting new truth without fear being the primary influence upon our acceptance of new truth. In other words, we are, we are now no longer preventing the absorption of the truth of the universe from entering us. Mm -hmm. When we're afraid, we're always trying to prevent or resist the absorption of truth. Whereas when we uh, have no fear at all anymore, we no longer prevent the absorption of new truth. We're no longer afraid of change. We're no longer afraid of having to accept a new belief that is contrary to our old belief. So we no longer hold on to fear-based beliefs, but we also, because divine truth results in a fearless existence, we no longer prevent the absorption of new truths through our fear. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the primary effects of divine truth. And it's one of the qualities of divine truth. So if we sort of had a look at that, how that would look like in terms of general actions, we would see that if we truly understood something as God understands it, we would no longer have any fear associated with the subject. Mm -hmm. We would only have the truth on the subject, and so therefore we would know everything we need to know about it. Now, if we give an example, when, when flight was first considered by humankind, they had a lot of fear associated with flight. You could fall from a great height yep. and therefore die, and there was no seeming ways of protecting oneself from fall. And so therefore, there was no seeming protection against the fall. And because we had all of these fears associated with it, we were also very resistive to discovering new facts about flight. Mm -hmm. Once mankind started to get over these fears, or we had a few brave people on the planet who were willing to try to find out new truth, even though they had that fear, what eventually happened was that we discovered the laws about flight, which, were, which are now called the laws of aerodynamics, the laws that control the, the ability to have heavier than air flight. Once those laws were discovered, there was less fear. Mm -hmm. And once those laws were engaged in a, in a way that we knew that they worked in a certain manner, then there is very little to no fear at all. So if you look at what we do now, the majority of us, in the, particularly in the Western world, fly overseas or inside of our countries all the time. Mm -hmm without giving any consideration to it aside from jumping in a bus. It's just a bus that flies. Yeah. And we don't have any worry about falling to the earth, uh, very little concern about it happening because we have a lot of confidence in the law. And we have the right to have a lot of confidence in the law because as long as we engage the law in a perfect manner, we will be completely safe. Mm -hmm. And so this is an example how divine truth results in a more fearless existence. Yeah. So when we first begin the discovery of flight, there was a lot of fear associated with it and only a few brave people would engage it. Now that we know most of the laws involved with flight, with heavier than air transportation, we now engage the laws almost on a daily basis without any fear at all. Yeah. And that's an example how divine truth results in a fearless existence. That's a physical example. If we look at uh, a, an example regarding our spiritual existence, yep. if there is a spiritual teaching that results in more fear internally, then it means that it can't be divine truth because divine truth would result in a less fearless existence from a spiritual perspective. So we need to understand that anything that we believe in spiritually that seems to create more fear or exacerbate the fear we already feel, and that 
is obviously not harmonious with love as well, as we've already discussed, then, then we could no longer really accept it as a potential truth of God. Yeah. It might be mankind's ideas of what actually occurs, but it wouldn't be a potential truth of God while there's so much fear associated with it. I think that's a really um, interesting point because we often, like common society often associates God with fear. Mm. We even have the phrase God-fearing. I'm a good God-fearing God person. person. Exactly. And really what you're saying that it's only falsehood that creates fear. Exactly. So if anything in our spiritual lives is controlling us through fear, then we, we can basically say this is not a truth from Exactly. what you're saying. So the whole concept that we should fear God is not a truth. Mm -hmm. God does not want us to fear God. God wants to be able to have a love-based relationship and fear and love are actual almost like opposites. They cannot exist in the same space at the same time. When we're afraid of something, we certainly cannot love it. Yeah. And so if we are afraid of God, then we certainly cannot love God and certainly would also block the reception of God's love into our own soul as well as a result of our fear of God. Mm -hmm. In addition, the fear is not based on truth. So God's love cannot flow into us while we have an untruth in us or, uh, or a belief that's untrue in us about God herself. Yeah. Yeah. To, to have the love flow, we must release the fear-based position and by experiencing it and releasing it, so that we get to the truth-based position, which is there is no fear in love. Mm -hmm. And so therefore there is no fear of God yeah. uh, as a result. So any teaching that causes us to believe that we should fear God is already out of harmony with divine, God's truth, mm -hmm. God, God, the reality of God's, of God's nature. In addition, we can see that there are many false beliefs on the planet spiritually from a, from a religious perspective that are completely out of harmony with divine truth if you just examine them from the point of view of fear. Yep. So the whole hell, fire, torment teaching doctrine that exists in Christianity and, and in other religious faiths mm -hmm. is while it, it sounds good or it sounds like the wicked will be punished in a certain way and that might sound good to somebody who thinks they're righteous, um, the reality is it's a, it's a fear-based perception of the universe and therefore it cannot be the reality of the universe. Mm -hmm. It has to be related to a false belief because divine truth results in a fearless existence. Once we know the truth about the entire spiritual existence, including the spiritual dimensions, we wouldn't be worried about a hellfire in which we could be tormented forever and ever and ever without any, any let, let up. Mm -hmm. The same goes with the belief that there is some kind of... Uh, deviant mastermind of the universe, mm. a Satan, the devil, if you want to call it. Again, it's a very fear-based belief and any person who's steeped in that belief is often steeped in the fear that the belief, con that the belief uh, creates. And as a result, uh, it's not in harmony with divine truth. It's mm -hmm. a, a fear-based belief. And so therefore, it cannot be the truth. This is one of the qualities of divine truth. It yep. cannot be God's truth if it is a fear-based belief. So just this one aspect of seeing something as a fear-based belief can help us throw away lots and lots of false doctrines for a start. It can help us throw away lots of false concepts about God. Yeah. It can also help us throw away lots of false concepts about ourselves, our future existence, our future life, and also about our physical existence. So in terms of how we see the material world, mm -hmm. it helps us throw away a lot of false concepts about the material world. So we no longer become, we're no longer afraid of spiders when we're in harmony with divine truth. We're no longer afraid of snakes when we're in harmony with divine truth. Yep. There's all these physical things that we're no longer afraid of because we now have a correct understanding of all of these things. We understand how the physical universe interacts with us mm -hmm. when we're in harmony with divine truth, when we know God's truth about the matter. So these are all benefits of understanding this one quality of divine truth, that divine truth results in a fearless existence. Mm. Yeah. When you started talking about this quality, you said that divine truth often exposes fear. Mm -hmm. but then you're also talking about the fact that when we embrace it, we don't have any. Yes. And we've also discussed the fact that if a belief controls us through fear, then it can't be truth. Yes. So could you just maybe 
outline a little bit the difference between exposing a fear or having a fear control us. Because I know for some people they might hear some elements of divine truth and initially it might bring up some fear for them. Yes, yep. certainly. So how's that different to say the belief in reincarnation and karma yep. or something that makes me feel afraid of, oh, you know, I've got to watch what I'm going to do because otherwise I'll come back as a bug kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so if we look at uh, what divine truth does and we look at what fear does, perhaps what we need to do is define what fear does first. Mm -hmm. uh, fears are false beliefs that appear real to us. They, they look real, but they're not real from God's perspective. But they look real to us individually or collectively because of our personal experience. And so we've imbibed them as an emotion. We have an emotion of fear that relates to that particular thing. Now, many times we suppress that fear. We deny its existence. Mm -hmm. We actually say to ourselves that it's normal to have that fear. Justified. Or... And we justify it, yeah. we minimise it and so forth because we believe it's normal to have a fear. So the average person in Australia, which has the 10 most poisonous snakes in the world, the average person here in Australia is afraid of snakes. And they feel justified by that position because we have snakes here that can kill you in two minutes if they bite you. Yeah. That's the fear-based position. That's not necessarily a truth, though. The divine truth, once it enters us about that particular subject, we'll start to understand the relationship between the snake and its reaction to the human condition. And therefore, we would no longer be afraid. We'll even understand the reaction of so-called toxin or poison to the human condition. Mm -hmm. So if we were ever bitten by it, we would understand the reaction of toxin or poison to the human condition. And in fact, we can get to the point where those kind of things no longer harm us mm -hmm. once we've worked through our fears about certain things. Now, once we understand all of that information, we are no longer constrained by our fear of snakes. So that's from a purely physical perspective. We're no longer constrained by it. We will walk everywhere we want, barefoot, whatever we want to do, and we're not going to be worried that some kind of snake's going to sneak out of the bush and bite us or, and, and we'll die two minutes later or yeah. anything like that because we're no longer constrained by the fear itself. Mm -hmm. The fear itself is what creates the actual um, event in most cases, and it, that's a law, in fact. Fear has to create events in order to trigger itself, mm -hmm. in order to, to cause the release of fear within ourselves. So once we understand that particular law from a physical perspective, we would no longer, from an emotional feeling perspective, so this has to be an emotional process, it can't be a physical one, from an emotional perspective, we'd no longer be afraid of snakes. Mm -hmm. If a snake all of a sudden crawled over us, we wouldn't jump up and down <laughs> and scream and do all the things we might normally do. Or what happens a lot here in Australia is that is the man runs out with a spade or an axe or something trying to chop its head off you know, yeah. and so yeah. forth in order to protect his family or whatever. Now, th those kind of events wouldn't happen anymore once we have a complete understanding of God's truth on the matter. Mm -hmm. God doesn't get afraid of any of God's creations. Mm -hmm. And if we're at one with God and at one with God in truth, we would no longer be afraid of any of God's creations either. Yep. So that's how it affects us from a physical perspective. Yep. From an emotional perspective, it should affect us as well. Fear is false emotions appearing real. In other words, things that we feel we should feel that are actually got no semblance to reality. So for example, most people on earth are afraid of dying. Mm -hmm. Now, every one of us is faced with death at some point in our, in our future. Mm -hmm. It's a normal occurrence of human life. And if we knew the full truth about death, none of us would be afraid of dying. Yeah. We wouldn't feel the emotion of fear about dying. Mm -hmm. However, because we do not know all of God's truth about the matter, we become afraid of death. We become afraid of dying. And it controls And us it controls yeah. our choices, decisions, and many other things in our life. And in fact, in, it is a trigger for many wars even. Yeah. The fact that one group of people is afraid of dying uh, is a trigger for uh, many wars. The attack and also the defence of a country, for example, is often triggered by this fear of death of what's going to happen when we die. Mm -hmm. The feeling of a loss of life and the feeling of a loss of our what we want to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were completely in harmony with divine truth and divine truth encourages a fearless existence, we would not be afraid of dying. 
yeah. because we would know all the truth about death. It's not, it's not that we're trying to no longer be afraid of death. Mm -hmm. It's because we know the truth about death that we're no longer afraid. Yeah. And we don't just know it in our mind, as a lot of people claim to, mm -hmm. but they are still very afraid. You know it in your feelings. You know it in your emotions. So you know it in your heart. That's why you're not afraid anymore mm -hmm. about death. Let's look at it from a spiritual perspective. Yeah, so we've looked at it physically, emotionally. Let's look at it from a, a spiritual, spiritual perspective. Yeah. From a spiritual perspective, and this, if we look at spirituality as mostly reflecting our relationship with God, then we would no longer be afraid of God and we'd no longer be afraid of God's laws. We'd no longer be afraid of God's universe. We'd have a more a strong desire to experience the universe and discover it rather than uh, stepping back from the universe and, and trying to maintain our own little safe place rather than going out into the world. So when we become truly spiritually oriented from God's perspective, we no longer form clans or family systems or cultures or nations because we believe we're all one with each other uh, so we're no longer guided though by those particular things. We now have the same amount of love for a stranger as we do for someone, our own child even. Mm -hmm. and, and as a result, our actions change quite significantly. This is an indication that our spiritual beliefs are now coming into more harmony with divine truth. So divine truth means, or God's truth means, that we will not be afraid whenever we consider anything. Mm -hmm. Physically, scientifically, mathematically, spiritually, you know, with music, art, science or any of these other areas of investigation, we will no longer have fear in us once we are truly in harmony with divine truth. Or if we still have fear within us, we will no longer be governed by the fear that's in us. We'll recognise the need to release it and we'll recognise the fact that the fear exists because we have some false belief that exists on that particular subject yeah. and not because it's true, mm -hmm. not because it's real. Because from God's perspective, once we are in harmony with God's truth, we will no longer have any fear on any subject. So therefore, no fear is real yeah. after that point. So I, the interesting thing from what you're saying to me is that you're saying that often when we're out of harmony with God's truth, fear is dictating mm -hmm. our existence. Mm -hmm. And then when we open ourselves to the fact that if fear is dictating our existence, then we, we don't know the truth. Then we immediately have this, uh, we can engage a process where we say, okay, what I'm believing in can't be true because it's, it's allowing fear to control me. Not only that, what I believe can't be true because I'm afraid. Yes. Once, and, and my belief isn't governed by my intellect. The, if, I, if I'm afraid emotionally, then it means my belief emotionally is very, very different to what I think it is. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, like, it does. So, so it's very much aligned with the emotional experience of the individual, not the intellectual experience of the individual. Yes. So there's a lot of people who believe they don't have a fear in their mind, but you put them in the situation and bang, their fear is automatically present. What I'm suggesting is their fear will not be present in that situation anymore once they understand God's truth about it. And that's a process, you're saying. There's, yes. there's a process that we can go through where we, we say, OK, emotionally I'm still afraid, but I know that there's a false belief creating this fear. Yes. Uh, otherwise I wouldn't be afraid. So I can now start to engage a process of desiring God's truth and this might be how my fears are exposed and released. Yes. Right. And in fact, it's the only way by which your fears can be exposed and released. Yeah. As we'll find out, there's another quality of divine truth later that talks about emotion. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so that's involved in this particular uh, understanding in, in terms of how you can correct the problem. But we must understand that fear is an emotion. It's a feeling. It's not something we're going to intellectually be able to avoid. Yeah. And when we're placed in situations, the instant we're in the situation, we will feel it unless there is a different belief in our soul yeah. that creates a different state within the individual. So, so the beautiful thing about the quality of, this quality of divine truth is it's basically exposing to us all of our false beliefs, whether they are religious, scientific, physical, emotional or spiritual, it exposes all of our false beliefs. Yes. Because once we understand that we wouldn't have fear if we understood the truth, God's truth on a certain subject, 
then we understand that every time I feel the feeling of fear or I deny the feeling of fear, I cannot be in harmony with God's truth on the subject. Mm -hmm. And this gives me the option now of being able to correct that problem rather than just live in it. See, most of us justify that position and live in it every yeah. single day, in fact. Yeah. And we see it happening all around us all the time. And even most people who still come to our seminars still justify the position of living in fear on a, a large variety of subjects. Absolutely. And this is an indication that this quality of divine truth is not understood at the soul level by them. Once it's understood at the soul level, they'll no longer allow fear to dictate what happens in their life. They might still have some, mm -hmm. but they won't allow it to dictate what happens in their life. And they'll understand that every time they have a fear, it stops them from accepting God's truth. It stops them from understanding universal truth. Whether they think they know the universal truth or not, it is stopping them from emotionally feeling that universal truth as a presence in their life. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Great. Um, so maybe we should move on to the second question, but there's just something that you had here in the notes which I thought was, and you, you touched on it briefly when you said that divine truth or accepting God's truth actually opens us two more truths mm. and something you've written here in the notes is that if a teaching prevents us seeking more truth then that teaching is not in harmony with divine truth. Yes so let's say we have a scientific principle that prevents us from examining more truth mm -hmm. some, for some reason then that scientific principle could not be in harmony with God's truth. It's not scientific in fact. Yes. It has to be based on some kind of emotional experience. If we have an emotional belief that stops us from examining or feeling more divine truth, then that's an indication that that emotional belief must be an error. It's mm -hmm. got to be out of harmony with God's truth. Mm -hmm. If we have a spiritual belief that stops us from examining more truth, so like just a simple belief like the Bible is God's word and there's nothing beyond the Bible, that's what I would classify as a fear-based belief mm -hmm. because it stops us from finding out more truth. Yeah. It's basically saying to us that all the truth of God of the whole universe is stored within the Bible and if you go beyond that, you're going to get punished and you're going to go to hell and you're going to have all these bad things happen to you. And none of it is true, mm. as is daily demonstrated to us by anybody who doesn't believe in the Bible. Yeah. The fact is they don't have all those things that are threatened happening to them at that moment no. or even after they die. Yeah. And so, so therefore it is untrue. Mm. But it is a belief that is stopping us from accepting more truth and therefore it can be thrown out, it can be discarded because all divine truth is fearless. It isn't governed by any fear, it doesn't cause us to get into any fear. And so when, when a truth or when we ourselves are fearless, we're always seeking and expanding and always, exploring. Always. So, and we know because God's truth is infinite, which was the first quality we discussed, yep. we know we're always going to be discovering new stuff. So we wouldn't be preventing ourselves from discovering new stuff by having or holding on to a belief system that prevents us yeah. from discovering new things. Yeah. And, and we wouldn't be worried about whether it's in harmony or out of harmony with God's truth. We would soon discover it because mm -hmm. we know that we're, we're not afraid of being in or out of harmony. We, we will just discover it and once we discover it, then we'll bring our lives into harmony with it. Just, it's just like discovering something physical, you know, like discovering the law of aerodynamics. Once we discovered that, we decided to bring our life into harmony with that as a desire. We didn't go, oh, I'm afraid of that. You know, we weren't dragged kicking and screaming. Most of us now, can you imagine us in an airport being dragged kicking and screaming to be sit, sit in a seat and being strapped down and then we go like this the entire time and then we, you know. There probably is a small percentage of the population possibly, that still does that. Yeah. Possibly, but the reality is <clears throat> the people who do that probably wouldn't fly. Most of us fly because we desire to. Yeah. It's easier than travelling in any other way for long distances and so we do it. And, and we choose to do it because that's our desire. This is the beauty of a fearless existence is we finish up choosing to do things that we were previously afraid of mm. once we understand God's truth. You know what I find really fascinating is that the scientific community is often more open to this process of a fearless experimentation yes. than many people in spiritual pursuits and often science and spirituality or sp science and religion are pitted against each other when actually um, they could really learn about 
time. Well, I feel religion could learn a lot from science because, in a, and from scientific endeavour and from the scientists themselves just in terms of their attitude. Yes. Because the attitude of most religious faiths is don't go looking for anything more, God might be against it, you might be punished in your future, after you die something bad might happen. That's the general attitude of most people in spiritual circles, mm. of religious circles of all kinds. And yet the scientific attitude is, yes, we want to know more about the universe. It's always benefit man by knowing more about the universe. And if we make a mistake, well, we'll just try well, something we'll new. we just try yeah. another experiment, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, if we make a mistake. And these are the attitudes that God wants to encourage us to have, mm -hmm. but which uh, most religious faiths deny that God wants to encourage us to have. And most religious faiths are in heavy fear of, in mm. fact. Hence, they are constantly criticising any advances in scientific knowledge. Whereas when we become, when we're in harmony with God's truth on the matter, we're not afraid of advances in scientific knowledge. We welcome them because it just means we're going to have to change on a concept or a belief we have to bring it into harmony with the scientific knowledge we've discovered. So we're not afraid of that. And, and we're not afraid of some kind of future events. Mm. So this is the thing like the laws of reincarnation, for example, that people have, which are not laws at all, they're just um, theories. theories. Most of them are fear-based because they're causing people to be afraid of what will happen you know, in their future at some point because of what they do now and, and what they've done in the past. There is a law of compensation. There is uh, this idea of penalties or, or, or that we'll see, see and examine as a divine truth. But it's not driven by a fear, a fear of the future. It happens in the instant. Mm. It happens right now. The instant you break a law, a, a truth of God, the instant there's a consequence. You jump off a building and the instant you do that, pretty soon thereafter, you've got the response. And, that, and we're not afraid of that. We know that there is this correlation between the law or the truth and the results of the truth. Um, a person who's living in harmony with this principle would have no fear whatsoever about that process. Because it's designed to help us learn more truth. It's de yes, the whole lot is designed to help us more live more truth, learn more truth, live in harmony with more love, learn more love, learn how to look after our personal existence, learn self-responsibility. There's so many things that it's designed. God's laws are all designed into helping us become more personally responsible in our life. And so why would we be afraid of that? We'd want that yeah. if we were truly open to God's truth and truly open to this particular quality of divine truth. Mm. Mm. Okay, thank you. All right.